Hello again. Here I have a thoroughbred, a rather rambunctious thoroughbred uh, that's here for me to work with for a while, and I get a few thoroughbreds. But the uh, he's here just to s <coughs> learn to settle in. Um, you can see I'm not very significant to him, but occasionally I think he's been known to possibly rear, from what I hear, and maybe even kick out a little bit. So right now, you notice his blanket's on. So what I decided is I would work with him in the arena first and set things up well for me to be able to take that blanket off rather than doing it in the stall or something like that. And oftentimes I'll tell people to, to saddle their horse up in the ring because I combined my groundwork and my grooming together sometimes. Now, you notice I'm pretty much invisible to him. He just looks to the outside. And the way I deal with that is I cut an angle. I walk off to the side, and you notice he crosses the hind quarters. So um, I might step off to the side, and he crosses that rear. That, and all of a sudden, you'll see he'll get interested in me because I'm getting to the hind feet. So there we go. So he hears other horses and I can't I can't stop a horse from being excited. I can I can work with it. I can take it. I can redirect the excitement, but it's a fact. It's just he's excited. But as he goes, he'll understand that I'm getting to those hind legs. If right here I'll cut an angle. And if you count how many times he crosses his inside hind leg under, it's a lot. Now movement really can be a good thing if we know what to do with it. And at times it can be frustrating when we need a horse to stand, but they need to move. But when a horse is younger like this, I don't mind a little movement, I'll take it. And pretty soon we'll be directing it into something pretty neat. So you can see how I'm just sort of sending him and moving him off. Um, you can see he's pretty pushy. He doesn't really know halt yet, at least when he's excited. Now some people will say, oh, some people say, my horse halts. But then I ask, well, what about under pressure? Does your horse, does your horse halt under pressure? Something interesting about cutting an angle, and that's when I walk off to the side again. When I do that, I end up back in front of the horse again. So he might walk past me. We'll, we'll let this happen. So he might walk right past me, and when he does, I'll just cut an angle, and that'll take his hindquarters away and notice I'm in front again. Now say he comes around and he comes past my side again. I'll cut an angle again. The funny thing about this is, after a while, he'll stop because he'll say, geez, you're always in front of me. No matter what I do, he wants to get in front of me, but I just cut an angle, get to the haunch there, and I'm in front again. Cut an angle, and he's stopping away, stopping with his mind off of me. Good, good. Cut an angle, I'm in front again. Not only do you get to the hindquarters, but the horse thinks you're pretty, pretty handy. There he sort of is letting down a little bit. My eyes are up, my chin is up, and I'm trying to be aware of where he is at because he's not that aware of where I'm at. And I want my toes, and good job. There he let down a little bit. Notice the change in posture. Walk off, cut an angle. If he stops square or relatively straight with me, then I might, I might let him stand. And here he's looking and chewing. He's starting to draw his attention around to me better. Notice that I'm able to keep a distance, even though he is sort of known to perhaps come into your space like that. <laughs> By cutting an angle, it allows me to keep a distance. All of a sudden, he goes, oh, you're pretty, we're pretty handy. 
And I say, yeah, now let's see if we can take your front end over a little bit. Now I bumped slightly because he was just going to come right on top of me. Now he doesn't know any better. It's just what he's used to. And being a racehorse, think about that for a second. See if he'd stop straight, sort of, a walk off. But being a racehorse, since the beginning, since he was born, his whole being was to line up straight through the spine. You could see I bumped there, I bumped here. What I'm gonna see is get, get off me. I have this there little change. He comes forward, nope, get off me. If he comes past me now at this point, I'll bump him back and say, I've got my front side to you. So you don't go out, you don't leave. I'll take that hind quarters over, cross that hind legs. We'll see if we can get a little back up. And there, he's in front. So that's looking pretty, pretty nice. I'll cut an angle here. I want to back off. I don't want him to feel like I'm just in his face. So I will back off. Cut an angle. Pretty soon, he says, ah, now he's looking right past me. Yeah, I'm not invisible, but I sort of am to him. Therefore, why mess with the blanket yet? Why, why would I do that? I think a lot of people think, oh, my horse stopped. Let's saddle him, or my horse stopped. Let's get, let's get the blanket off. And in reality, the horse is not aware of you. That, that was a nice little change there. As his head came down, he thought about me a little bit. Don't come forward through me. I'll take the hindquarters. If I get to the hindquarters, I can get to the whole horse. Now, notice that when he does stop, he really looks away. And I want you to think about your horses that you have, and if you get that sometimes, because I've noticed that when horses stop, they think that that's their free chance to look around. But think about this. The halt is so important, because if he could halt well, and stand, that might allow me the ability to, to gain space, see? So he creeps forward, so I say back up, stay put, friend, and then, oh, whoa, whoa, stay put. I'd really like his nose to be between his shoulders. But then when I walk off, I have distance because I got him to, to essentially back up, but halt. Key thing is halt. There, back up came through sooner. Step to the side. I'm gonna move that hind quarters. It's not pretty yet. I don't think people always realize that the instant that your horse sees you, you go to catch him outside, or you walk into the barn and he's in the stall, the instant that they see you, they're, they're observing. Maybe they're learning. Training starts then. So it doesn't start when you sit in the saddle. It doesn't start when you, uh, after the cross ties and you restrain your horse, tie its head up, saddle it. People are mindless doing that. Horses get crabby. You tighten up the girth. They bite at the cross ties. Then you wonder why when you squeeze your leg, your horse pokes its nose out. It's looking better. So I like to work on my horse in the ring or when he's ready. So I had his head straight for a little bit there. Oh, he's going to fall over. That was interesting. He was leaning over to the side. I think you forgot about his feet. Ah, he kicks his hind legs out a little bit. Getting back to that idea of racehorses, the whole, from the start, they get excited, lively, straight in the body, and they usually go forward. And even when people lead with chains and they're bumping, I've seen pictures of people on racetracks with lip chains. That's funny. You, someone even has to do that. But that horse gets nervous and they're bumping the chain and the horse walks with its head up and you're teaching your horse when you're nervous, get straight. So that becomes default mode for horses. When they're nervous, get straight, which makes sense because they can get out of there. I want to teach him this. Bend, arc, bend through your body. Look at me. Bend through your body, cross the hind legs, I got the hind legs, but I didn't get the bend. That's nice right there. Look at that. They arc when they bend through the body. The mind comes around. The body bends. The feet come. They'll be arcing. They'll be nice and arcing. So this is an improvement. I, I do realize that he's, he's looking away. 
a redirect him. You lose, you lose his mind a little bit. All of a sudden, he forgets you're there. Take the hind end. I might back up a little bit. If I can get this going for me, this idea of stopping straight, nose between the shoulder, it's going to help me for everything else. He's going to settle in. He's going to start to look. He's going to start to look at me more and come to. I want his default to be look at what it is that's making you nervous and maybe even chase the danger sometimes. Go towards it. Don't run away. Hind quarters. Look how smooth he's getting, and then the halt comes through. It's great. And I'll offer opportunities to stand and let him think, although right now, what's he thinking about? He's thinking about the window behind me. I'm sort of, uh, right now, he's sort of considering me. That's better. That's a nice change there. I don't even rub a horse that much until, until they start to take and consider me to when they're mindful, more mindful of me. He goes, you're down there, and then maybe then I'll rub. But I'm not going to rub a horse that's looking away, that's high-headed, because where is his mind? You're rubbing a horse that's not even paying attention to you, and he, he learns stand still, look away. You're going to rub him, and he's going to think, yeah, good. So I wait till they're, they're mindful. I'll start scratching his forehead. They love that. He's a nice horse. But his mind, some of these thoroughbreds, their mind, you know, they might be a six, seven-year-old horse, but they've got the mind of a two, three-year-old sometimes. On the track, you know, think about where the priorities are for these horses and think about what they know and what life experiences they have. So I work with a lot of track horses, a lot in a week, at different places, not just at my stable but there's a lot of thoroughbreds around, and they're great horses. The minds are good, athletic. Um, but they're independent sometimes, you know? Think about running in a big herd with a bunch of other horses around a track. We, we, we pretend that horse is like that. Maybe some do, but you ask that horse... If he likes running around with all those horses like that, I don't know sometimes. But I need this horse to come to me and relax, and he will. We'll get some changes out of him. And you might think he hasn't even gotten the blanket off yet. And I say, that's all right. That's all right, because this is what's going to matter when we ride him and we go outside. Hindquarters forward, halt when I turn towards you. That's looking better. Let's walk off before he gets antsy. What if I turn my headlight here, lead, take him around? Now, I personally like horses that have movement, uh, that are lively, energetic. I like that for me. Look at that walk. That's nice. I sure want to get that blanket off, and we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Cross that hind legs, come towards me. Turn oh, boy, turn towards him, and he says he's going to run past, and I go, wait a second. There's like an imaginary wall here that I've got. It's my, my space. And I say, you get back. There's a little change there. I can't make a horse. I can't make a horse do anything, but I can, I can encourage that hindquarters to, to step. Now let's get your attention. That's better. Now he is looking past me a little bit. I can't be too greedy or I'll frustrate him and he won't understand. I want to be able to go out and catch him t tomorrow and not have him walk away. Now, this is interesting. He's starting to come back, come back to the arena here to me. Nose between the shoulder. Encourage that. I, I approach. He's skeptical. He goes, you, just, you were just moving me around and bumping. I said, I know, but my intention is to just pet you. Now, I got one buckle, and... His head was turned to the right, so I didn't want to keep keep working at it until I have his mind on me. Always able to bend. Yeah, his head was sort of to the outside, so I wasn't super thrilled about that. Look at that. I go to this side, he looks away. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny because every side I go to, he... Uh, 
He looks to the outside. Oh, I can learn so much about horses, the, the personality, and, and I, you can even get a feel for, for their life experiences even. Uh, I noticed I only had one leg strap, so, okay, he only has one leg strap, so that's fine. Snorty. So I like to be a one-man show when it comes to uh, kind of a little hasty there to get that Velcro. But I'm sort of a one-man show when it comes to starting a horse or you know, some people say restarting a horse. It's kind of interesting. And then, and then uh, mounting, I'm a one-man show. Trailer loading. Let's get this blanket out of, out of range here. Trailer loading, I'm a one-man show. Why? Because if it takes two people, something's wrong. He's exploring and looking at himself in the mirror. You can't see it. I know we're out of frame. It's nice to be at a distance. And there's so many people that would just benefit from this. And so many horses would, would let down, put their head low, if you just got out of your horse's space.